We're here at the Apple Store in Palo Alto, where the company is giving the media an early chance to go through the demo process that they're going to let customers go through starting today, running through the 24th. They're only giving us a few minutes, so we're going to try and quickly catch you up with the things that they're going to let you try when you do come in. After walking over to a table away from the crowd of reporters, an Apple employee went to the back and grabbed a tray holding a variety of models. So I'm going to go like this, I'm also going to turn your wrist. Uh, important to note that you buckle this first. Then uh, slide it in. Yeah, then slide it in. So uh, the sport bands do come with two bands in the box. So it'll come with a small medium and a medium large. Yeah, I know, noticed a lot of people advising, you know, measure your wrists beforehand, but how is it basically like with the sport band, does it really matter because there's two of them included? Exactly, so you, it's one size fits all with the sport band. Uh, you're oh. gonna, one, one of the two will wow. work for you. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna try on 38 and 42 together. Perfect. Uh, one thing to think logistically, you do have a couple of weeks to figure it out. Uh, you will need to be on 8.2 for the watch to pair with your phone. Right. And you will need a five or above. Cool. So, we have a size comparison of 38 and 42. Both are surprisingly tiny, in my opinion. I kind of expected the 42 to take up my whole wrist. You can use the higher end bands with the sport, right? Correct. But some of them, for example, the space black link bracelet, you can only buy in that box model. Right. It'll fit on everything, but you can only buy it with the Apple Watch. Right. So, taking it off is pretty easy. You just press, there's this little button here. Okay. You press up. Uh, yeah, go for it. it. What's great about these two is it's reversible, so if you are left-handed, you can then wear your watch oh, like this. Very seamless. It's just one unit. There's no like hooks or anything to deal with. So the steel collection, it's a little bit heavier in the hand, but in like a good way, in that it feels very dense and solid. Uh, this doesn't feel cheap by any means, but this feels, it definitely feels like a piece of jewelry compared to this. This feels very gadgety, if that's a distinction. <laughs> How do I know which side is, I guess, up when I'm slotting these in. So it's going to be different for each watch. Okay. Uh, for this one, um, if you put this here, that is going to assume that it's a right-handed watch. Okay. It can be left-handed. You can switch it, and that's where you'd switch the bands up and down. Because okay. uh, the idea is the digital crown always faces your fingers, so if you're left-handed, it's easy to uh, adjust. Um, so for right-handed, you want to have this piece on top. And let me slide this in, see how that goes. Is it, can you slide from either direction? Yeah. Oh, okay. For a second, it felt like it wasn't going, and then... Oh. You notice it kind of clicks, so there's yeah. a little magnet. You see three pieces of rubber on the outside. The one with the silver middle, that's the one that goes Yeah, there's definitely no way you side. can mistakenly, oh, I went too far, there's no way to do that. Exactly, it's, yeah. It's in. I'm not missing anything feature-wise if I get the sport instead of the watch, right? No. Uh, so basically, material-wise. Yeah, no. Yeah. Material-wise, this definitely feels more like jewelry, and the display is sapphire instead of glass, right? Correct. I don't know why, but in some of the pictures and videos I've seen before, it looked like the digital crown would be awkwardly pressed against my skin, but no, I can totally just—it's really smooth and doesn't feel like it's attaching on my wrist or anything. I would love to try the Milanese band. Definitely. Or, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yep. Okay, Milanese. Cool. Yeah, so with this one, the cool thing about it is that it's infinitely adjustable, right? Yeah. So this clasp, magnets, it will magnetize anywhere. Uh, you'll want to, when you put it on, kind of extend it as much as it goes, and then gradually get that good fit. So basically, it's the magnet can catch in on any point, yeah. and then just stay there. Exactly. So, I'm going to turn your wrist. I'll set it a little loose, and then you can kind of fine tune from there. Is there any particular tightness that matters, for instance, for the heart rate tracker? There is not. You will okay. want it against the skin, obviously, if it's completely loose and it's not touching, uh, it may not read it. So I can kind of adjust it like that, and then put it at any point, and it just sticks, and then stays. I, that's, that was something else I was worried about, was that, oh, infinitely adjustable, that means I'll always have to fiddle with it. <laughs> that is like, that's stuck there. If it's I pretty don't nice, right? Move. Unfortunately, the models they bring out for fitting are running a video loop, not the watchOS demo. There are some demo units in the store, but they're bolted to a table. Still, you do get to try out most of the watch's interface. The most intriguing part of the demo experience is messaging. 
Each demo unit comes loaded with messages and emails to respond to or dismiss. And you have your pick of response types. Pre-baked messages for quickly responding to a text, a short audio clip, a transcribed message, and fun emojis which animate as you rotate the crown. Each option will be preferable in different contexts, and Apple made them equally easy to use quickly. I also look forward to controlling music and podcasts from my wrist. The default music app ties into your iTunes library and gives you big buttons for pausing and skipping around, as well as the option to use the crown to adjust volume. I generally don't wear headphones with integrated controls, so reaching for my wrist to make quick volume adjustments or to skip the ads and podcasts seems optimal. My biggest concern upon first use is that some of the touch targets throughout the watch OS are a bit tiny, and in some apps the text isn't actually a button you can press. It's one of those things that could frustrate a lot of people, but just as the home button offers an escape hatch on your iPhone, watch owners can press the digital crown at any time to get back to more familiar territory. If you're still on the fence about picking up an Apple Watch, I'd recommend scheduling a quick visit to the Apple Store. Photos of the watch on other people's wrists simply don't give an accurate idea of what it's like to have on, or how pleasant the bands feel when snug against your skin. That goes for software too. The watch OS offers new modes of interaction that you really should try before committing to living with.